Hey guys, uh, Mr. B here again, bringing you another lovely math video. I've been slacking off a bit with the videos lately, uh, you know, school year is getting started and trying to get all my courses figured out, you know, trying to get the year off to a good start for my students and myself. Uh, so I thought I'd, you know, a Saturday night here, bring you a lovely uh, linear relations video. Uh, this one on uh, finding a linear relation from a table. I did one of these a little while ago, I thought I might do another one, just with a few more examples. Um, so again, if you're looking for a linear relation from a table, the first thing you want to check is what's happening to uh, your independent variable, what's happening in your, in your first column in your table. So if you look at this guy, uh, we have, essentially, we have the independent variable, or in this case, n, is going up by 1. So that's what, you know, ideally we'd like to happen. You know, it's not always the case, but ideally we would like to happen. So then we want to look what's happening to the independent variable. So, you know, our c is independent this this time. You know, essentially your y, I guess probably what most people be used to. This one looks like it's going up by 3. So as n increases by 1, uh, c increases by 3. So this is how we can start our um, our uh, relation. So we'd have c is equal to 3n. So we always start with um, you know your independent variable or sorry your dependent variable which is c is equal to 3 times n. So you know you could do a quick check and see if this works right so if you try with 3 as n is 3 we go 3 times 3 now 3 times 3 is 9 we should get 7 so something has to happen after this whether we add or subtract a number to it so all I'd like to do is just do a quick check so you know I'll put a little I'll put a little blank right here so we need to do something after it and let's figure it out so I use uh, 3 so I'll use 3 again so I know C should be 7 and then I go 3 times 3 so I'm gonna put a 3 right where that is well I'll actually write that out just for this one and then a blank so I'm going to put plus blank, why not? And I can just add the negative if I want to. So then I have 7 is equal to 9 plus blank. So then, obviously, if... Well, I shouldn't say obviously, but... Um, you know, if I need 7 and I have 9, I need to take away 2 here, right? So subtract 2. So my equation looks like this. C is equal to 3n subtract 2. So that's what I'd add there, my minus 2. So that's what you got for that one. So now we check it with another one. So let's see if, say, 5 would work. So we go 5 times 3 is 15. Subtract 2 is 13. So we're good to go. All right, let's check the next one. So if we look at the next one, what we notice is that the independent variable x, see, in this case, goes up by 2. And for these ones, they go up by one. So we got to be really careful that we catch that, because when we go when we go over here, we notice this first one here goes up by ten, but then the rest goes up by five. So we want, you know, the change in the uh, de dependent variable as the independent goes up by one. So as x increases by one, what's happening to y? So we have to take the plus five as our change. So let's see. So y is equal to 5x. So then we'll just do a quick little test. Now we have 0 in here, so I'll talk about that in a second, but I'm going to I'm going to use 2 for just for uh you know, for fun. So 2 times 5 is 10. We need 13. So it's not quite right, right? So we have to add something here. So we have 13 is equal to 5 times 2 plus some magical number, and 13 is equal to 10, plus something, well that something's obviously 3. So, we'd have y is equal to 5x plus 3. Now you see, anytime you have 0 in your table, your uh, number that you add on is your 3. Now some people might be asking why I'm not calling this, you know, the y equals mx plus b and stuff like that. I'm kind of assuming that you don't know about slope and y-intercept yet. you are just got a table and you're trying to find some stuff from it. If you're looking for a little bit more of an advanced video on the equation of a line, then check out some of my other videos. Um, yeah, so let's try one more. This one even more different, even a little bit more different. 
if that makes sense. No, it doesn't make sense. I lived a bit differenter. No, I don't even know if that makes sense. All right, let's try this one. So we going up by we uh, apparently I forget how to speak here on a Saturday night. Um, the independent variable r in this case going up by five. So this one's different because we don't have that change in one. Now this one here is going up by plus fifty each time. So when this occurs. And if you look back at this one, it occurred, and my change, how what I was going up by, my number was 5, and this one increased by 2, and this one was 10. So if I divided 10 by 2, I would have got my change. Well, the same thing happens over here. You know, your rate of change or what's happening here, all we'd want to do is take the change in the dependent variable and divide it by the change in the independent variable. So what we're going to do is we're going to go 50 divided by 5. Let me see if I can write that. 50 divided by 5 is equal to 10. So that's what my change is. So, um, you know, a lot of people know that as the change in y over the change in x. Some people call it rise over run. Some people call it y2 subtract y1 over x2 subtract x1. Um, really, all I think about it is in the change in the independent, change in the dependent, divided by the change, so change in the dependent, divided by the change in the independent variable. So, um, you know, it's slow, but maybe right now you're not there yet. Um, you're just you're just looking for the relation, so that's all I'm assuming that you know. So all you really need to remember is that we, if we're not going up by 1 in the first column, then you have to make sure you divide the uh, right column or second column by that number that you go up by. So in our case, divide by 5. So we end up with C is equal to 5R, and then we'll try a number. Let's try 5. It's the smallest one. So 5 times 5 is 25. We need 50. So we already got 25, so I can add 25. Let's see what works with 100. 5 times 10 doesn't. What? Hang on now. I know what's going on here. Why do I have a 5 here? It didn't have a 5. Here we go. Much better. So now that's going to change that number, obviously. Apparently, uh, late night math videos aren't a great idea. But anyway, I digress. So I got 10 times R. So 5 times 10. 50 already. 10 times 10 is 100. So this one's already done. It's lovely. So, um, yeah, so guys, I hope this helped. I'm sorry about the, uh, you know, my inability to speak at the last of the video. It's kind of a late. So, um, hope, hopefully this sort of, uh, sorts out a few things. If you've got any questions, feel free to drop me a few, uh, drop me a line. Thank you so much for listening.